In this video, we are going to take a look at Unit 7, Lesson 3 about tangent lines. So we're going to explore um, lines that intersect a circle in exactly one point. By the end of this video, hopefully you will be able to use the relationship between the radius and a tangent line to determine angle measures in a diagram like this. Let's start out by taking a look at um, this picture here. So we've got you swimming in the water here. Okay, so here you are. You want to get to shore. Okay, so you want to get out of the water and you want to be on shore. So what would be, think about the path that would take you to shore the quickest. How would you get there in the quickest time possible? Which, where would you swim? What would that path look like? So if we took a look at some different paths here that we could take, um, we, we, we obviously know some of them are longer than others. Like if you swim to here, so here's kind of all the different paths you could take to get you to shore, right? So which one are you going to want to take? Well, you want to take the shortest one in order to um, get there the fastest, right? So where seems to be the shortest is maybe here. We've got all these other ones we could possibly take. So let me draw in a few of these. Um, but which one seems to be the shortest? Okay, and it seems like maybe this one, this kind of direct path, this direct path, or maybe that is perpendicular to the shore, just straight to the shoreline, quote unquote. All of these are obviously straight paths, but a lot of people say like straight to the shore, straight to the shore. And what they're talking about really is like this perpendicular path. So if you look at page 157, we have a diagram of this. Um, and so here you are swimming at point C, L is the shoreline. And so we're kind of thinking it makes sense that this perpendicular line is the shortest path, but can we prove it? Okay, is it truly the shortest path? And Diego is saying no matter where we put point D, okay, so point D can go anywhere else along here, no matter where we put it, Pythagorean theorem is going to tell us that CJ, this perpendicular dotted line or this perpendicular path, is going to be shorter than segment CD. So CJ has to represent the shortest path to shore. Do we agree that CD would have to be longer than CJ? So think about if you agree or not. And it would stand to reason that Diego is correct because CD is the hypotenuse. We know that by definition, that's the longest. Pythagorean theorem would guarantee it because when we do this, our C value, we're going to add together A squared plus B squared, and then we're going to square root it, right? But we're adding together these two lengths to get to this one. So C has got to be longer than these other two. So when we're looking at this again, um, and, you know, in life, when you're talking about how far are you from something, Okay, so how far are we from the shore? Because the shore extends this whole line. It keeps going. Okay, but how far are we? And when we define our, our distance to somewhere, okay, we define it as the shortest distance possible between us. So we're going to define it as this path. Okay, so we're going to define it as the perpendicular path to that line. And that is going to be defined as our distance. So same thing when we're talking um, in math on a diagram. So the shortest distance from point C to this line is going to be our distance. So how far is it from C to this line is going to be the length of this perpendicular path or this perpendicular segment to the line. Okay, so seeing that right angle is going to help us define the distance a point is from a line. All right, um, and so this is a new definition. A line tangent to a circle intersects the circle in exactly one point. So now we're talking about a tangent line, not the tangent function from when we were doing um, right triangles. 
but a line tangent to a circle intersects the circle in exactly one point. So take a look at this diagram. How many tangent lines do you see? Is PQ a tangent line? And is segment ON a tangent line? So hopefully um, you saw one tangent line, right? So this is our one tangent line. It intersects the circle um, at point R. So it's intersecting only at point R. This is called the point of tangency, okay, where the tangent line hits the circle. Um, PQ is not a tangent line because it is hitting this circle twice, right? It's extending through the circle and you see that it's touching the circle in two points at Q and at P, so that is not a tangent line. And then segment ON, is that a tangent line? Well, no, okay, it, if we extended it, so if you looked at ON, if you were to extend this, it would cut through the circle and hit twice. It's not because it's a segment, so it's not extending. But if we thought about line ON, okay, going through here, it is going to extend and hit twice. So yes, the segment only hits the circle once, but when we think about extending it, that extension is going to hit twice, so not a tangent. So again, this is the definition of a tangent line. Um, ex hits exactly at one point, and that point is called the point of tangency. So make sure you've added that to your vocabulary. Um, you will hear this called point of tangency. And it's where the tangent line hits the circle. All right, so let's take a look at page um, 158. You have a circle drawn there. So draw in and label a radius. So draw any radius you want and then label it OA. So it doesn't matter where you put A, just draw in a radius. Label the other end of the radius A. Now you need to construct a perpendicular line to OA through point A. Okay, so it needs to be perpendicular to your radius through point A. So you can use a compass or a protractor to do this. And then we need to think about why can that line only intersect the circle one time and what kind of line is N. So go ahead and do that and then come back to the video. So you could have um, taken a protractor to measure um, a 90 degree angle here and make sure that it goes through this point. So just set your um, compass here, line it up with your radius, and then um, figure out where 90 would be, a 90 degree angle. And then connect um, that through A. And then you can just extend it so that it goes through A and is perpendicular. Um, let me get this labeled in here. So now um, what type of, why can this line only intersect um, the circle at one point? So why is A the only point that this could intersect at is what we're asking. And um, because if we put a point anywhere else out here, right? So if we put a point anywhere else out here, this is going to be further away from A, further away from the circle. Okay, from Pythagorean theorem, like we just talked about, this would have to be a longer distance. Okay, even here, it's going to be a longer distance. Okay, here, longer distance, longer distance. So the only one that can be this length and only point is just to A. Um, and so what kind of line is it if it can only touch the circle at one point? So this would be a tangent line. All right, so how do we prove line L is perpendicular to AB? Can you place a point C on the line so that C is closer to point A than it is to B? So how are we gonna prove these different things? 
So again, this is just thinking about it the same way we just did um, on the previous slide, is that um, in order for B to be the shortest distance, okay, if B is the closest point to A, then this has to be a 90 degree angle. That's what will guarantee us that this is going to be longer, this is going to be longer, this is going to be longer, same this way. So this point right here is the shortest distance to that line. So this has to be a 90 degree angle. And we would not be able to place point C anywhere on L that would be closer to A. Because this line is tangent, it's only intersecting one point. All these other points are going to be further away from A than B is. So what this does for us is tells us that if we have a tangent line, that tangent line is going to always be perpendicular to our radius. Okay, so the radius that hits that point of tangency, the line and the radius that hits there are going to be perpendicular. Okay, if and only if, forward and backward. So if we know that it's perpendicular, we know this is tangent. If we know it's a tangent, then we know it's perpendicular. So get this written on your reference chart. All right, then let's take a look at activity 3.3. So it gives us a diagram. We have these two rays that are tangent to the circle. So let's start by marking the approximate point of tangency. So where are those green rays hitting the circle? Then draw in the two radii to these points. And then label that central angle as W. So now can you come up with what is the value of W plus Z? So see if you can figure that out. What would be the value of W plus Z? Then come back to the video and we'll discuss it. All right, so in this, we know um, that we've got these tangent lines to the radii. So we know that this angle here is 90 degrees. We also know that this angle here is 90 degrees. So if we have this quadrilateral, if we look at this quadrilateral being drawn here, okay, with all of these angles, we know that the angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. So if I take all four of these angles, W plus 90 plus Z plus 90, that would equal 360. So then this would be W plus Z plus 180 is equal to 360 if I put these together. So then I could subtract 180 from both sides, and I would know that W plus Z would have to equal 180. Okay, so all of the time, this angle here plus this angle, total 180 when you've got these tangent lines. All right, then let's put this all together and take a look at this diagram. So in this diagram, we know that the green line is tangent to the circle. The point of tangency is B. How many right angles can you find in this diagram? So how many angles in there do you know are 90 degrees? So pause the video, think about how many you can find, and then come back. All right, so we know that a line tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius. So we would know that this angle here, ABC, is a right angle. Also, the one on the other side would be a right angle. We also see that FB is a diameter. So that means it's cutting this um, circle into two 180 degree um, arcs. So we could use the fact that we know um, inscribed angles. So inscribed angles from arc FB are gonna be 90 as well because they're gonna be half of that 180. So this inscribed angle here that goes with this semicircle is gonna be 90. This one as well is gonna be 90. So those are the angles that you can find in this diagram that are right angles. 
Um, so let's take a look at the lesson summary. So we know that a new word is tangent. So we know that a line is tangent to a circle if it intersects at exactly one point. That point that it intersects at is called the point of tangency. And we know that it's going to be um, perpendicular to the radius that touches at that point of tangency. So hopefully after this video, you can use the relationships between tangent lines and, and radii to calculate angle measures and prove theorems. And you know that the line um, tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to that point of tangency. You can practice and check your understanding by working on the lesson three practice problems. If you need help, remember that there's a video um, of me going through the practice problems and explaining that you can certainly watch. And you can check with this cool down. So now that we've learned that lesson, Line BC is tangent to the circle. So can you determine what the value of A plus C is? Explain and show your reasoning. And if you're struggling with that, be sure that you reach out to your teacher.